Pakimi Paco, Pakase Yale. Sounds very different than Pakimi Paco, Pakase. I don't know what I meant. I made it up. But it might have fooled you. The first delivery of the message was a lot more confident than the second one. And that meant that you probably paid a little bit more attention. At least I may have convinced you that I was speaking uh, something else. <laughs> you can do the same thing in music. I'm going to show you exactly how it's done on your guitar. That's coming up. Hi, my name is David Wallerman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players like yourself find their voice on the instrument, develop it so that you can tell your own musical story. And today is all about confidence and delivery. A lot of players think in terms of scales, which is cool. You need scales and you need harmony and you need those rules to be able to communicate in a way that's gonna reach out the most people possible. But if you don't have the confidence, then whatever scale you use is not going to be perceived as a message worth listening. Hold on there. I am editing the video that you shot yesterday. I think it's supposed to be worth listening to. Back to the video. Don't worry, it's something we can work on. It's very simple to do at any level. I highly suggest that you do the following exercise. I'm gonna grab my guitar. I'm gonna use a pedal tone for this video. I've used this in the past. As long as my foot is on the sustain pedal, the sound that you hear is gonna last. In this case, I'm gonna use a single note in the background so that all the notes that I play in the exercise are gonna be attracted to that note. This exercise has everything to do with visualization and anticipation. And it requires a practice space that is not disturbed by kids. I hope they're not gonna come in running like they did in previous videos. They shouldn't, they're napping now. But it has to do with concentration. You're basically concentrating on the delivery. Before playing anything, you know what you're about to play. Just like in that intro, I had to practice several times. I knew what I was gonna say. And that's why the delivery was so incredible. <laughs> Same thing here. So we're gonna set our metronome to something pretty slow, maybe 80 beats per minute. I'm gonna play a note, any note, and as I'm hitting this note, for example, low E string, fifth fret, as I'm playing that, my eyes are looking at the next note that I am aiming for. That next note shouldn't be in a position that you're comfortable with because we're trying to bypass the whole comfort thing, comfort zone really focusing on hitting a note that is kind of random. Your eyes is focusing on something that you're not playing. So in this case, if I play low E string fifth fret, my eyes are focusing on fourth string sixth fret. I'm gonna hit that note when the next click comes. And as soon as I hit that new note, my eyes are focusing on the next one. So you're never looking at the note that you're playing. It's really gonna help you. Let's try that exercise here. Once you can do that exercise for three to four minutes without, without messing up and with a clear delivery, we can move on to short rhythm melodic motifs. So because we are using non-patterns, things that are atonal, you're playing a note, randomly selecting the next one, focusing on that next one, and then playing that next one and focusing on the next, that means that your ear might not be completely in control of the sound that is gonna come out. That's okay. That's not the purpose of this exercise here. The purpose is to deliver a message, musical message, that is played with intent. So we're gonna focus mostly on the rhythm motif. So let's say that I've got um, this rhythm motif. Ta ka ta ka ta, for example. Very short, very simple. One, two, three, four, five, five notes. Ta ka ta ka ta. I'm, I'm gonna focus on that and I'm just gonna pick some notes randomly again. Before I play them, I need to have an idea of the zone of the fretboard. So I'll, I'll start here, fifth string, fifth fret. Um, I'll, I'm, this is slow motion, but it should happen faster. But I'm gonna kind of think, okay, I'll do this. One, two, three, four, five. Something like that. 
and then I play it. You can play it slower if you want, but you really want to make sure that every note comes with intent. Even if you don't play the note that you thought you were going to play, that note needs to be played with, um, with perfect delivery. In other words, your positioning needs to be right. You can't hesitate. You can't have your finger um, aiming for, let's say, the fourth string, fourth fret, and then you accidentally play the third, and so you try to correct it. Well, that that's not going to create uh, a well-delivered message. Okay, see, I did it there. I kind of messed up. I wasn't really freed from the anxiety of the camera or, or focusing on getting it right. So that's what happened. You don't want that. You want to really make sure that whatever you're going to play is going to be played in a way that convinces people that you knew what you were going to play. I'm going to do that exercise for a few seconds. I'm not going to use a click here. I'm going to play a drone with my sustain pedal and I'm going to imagine a rhythm motif and then kind of have an idea of the zone of the fretboard and deliver it and see what happens. These two exercises combined together are going to help you with what I think is the most beneficial thing to build up your confidence musically. This happens alone with no backing track, no, no tempo, no click, it doesn't matter. A drone is okay, but you don't have to. And we're going to play a musical idea that is going to be broken down mentally into smaller segments, so the small rhythm melodic motifs that we talked about in exercise two, the single line notes that we kind of talked in exercise one. And I want you to play this as if there was an audience in front of you and as if that musical piece is a piece that already exists. It's something that you're very confident with, but you're making it up on the spot. No drone involved is actually better because you're not going to have that uh, temptation to try to, to play something that matches that. You're really making something from scratch, anticipating what you're about to play. Smaller chunks might sound something like this, and that's really going to help you. I highly recommend that you do this exercise as many times as you can. It's going to strengthen the delivery of the musical message that you have. You can do it without a drone if you don't have the equipment to do that. That's totally fine. Just remember to visualize, anticipate the notes that you're about to play and think about those rhythm motifs and also think about the way you want to attack every note. If this was your first visit on this channel, I would love for you guys to subscribe. I have about three videos coming every week helping guitar players like yourself find their voice on the guitar, develop it, and tell your own musical story. Remember, nobody can play the way you play on the guitar. I'll see you next time.